Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. For premium picks, look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the 2014 NCAA March Madness College Tournament. Now, before I do, understand what I'm looking for here. I'm not just trying to pick the best team in the tournament, right? In fact, I'm not even sure if I'm trying to pick the best team in the tournament. Rather, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with a hedgeable position at sufficient leverage, a team full of athletes that I believe can make it to the Elite Eight. So I can then start hedging and make a profit when all is said and done. Right? I want to start hedging and have it set up where I'm getting such leverage by having this team still be alive late in the tournament that I can give away some of that leverage by betting on the other team. And if the other team wins the game, then I will at least make my money back and some kind of profit. Obviously, if my original team goes ahead and wins the tournament, I won't be complaining about that either. Right now, understand, my bias is toward teams that have depth and athletes. In other words, when the guys hit the court, I want to have my money on the physically dominant team. Not necessarily the better skill team, but the physically dominant team with the greater number of ballers so that at a minimum I know when the bullets start flying and these 18 to 21 year olds get a bit flustered and overwhelmed by the moment I want to have hops on my side right I want to have height on my side athletic height right I want to have muscle on my side. In other words, if the game comes down to rebounding, I'd rather have the leaper who's 6'9 going for the rebound than the overachieving 6'7 student athlete. Okay, now with that in mind, keeping in mind that my methodology is just to pick a team that I think is going to make it to the Elite Eight so I could start hedging to play. There are two teams to me that stand out. Let's talk about the first team. Right now, you've heard a lot about Jabari Parker. You've heard a lot about Wiggins. Let me tell you about a guy who at least is the athlete that both of those guys are. And that's freshman Aaron Gordon. Right? His team are the Arizona Wildcats. Right? They're one of the teams I'm going to put money on in this tournament. Understand, in my opinion, top to bottom, no team in this tournament has more athletes than the Arizona Wildcats. You look at Aaron Gordon. You look at Nick Johnson. You look at Brandon Ashley. You look at TJ McConnell. These guys have NBA bodies. Right? This team's also deep. They can go to the bench and have big kids, athletic kids, fast kids who can run the court come off the bench. Right? Let me point out the obvious too. They're one of the one seeds in this NCAA. Right? Now let's look at the team closely. I like teams who lose shortly before the tournament because I want the ego to get slapped out of the kids so when they show up on tournament day even if they're playing a 16 seed they know they have something to prove they know they can be beaten Arizona was asleep in the first half against UCLA recently and lost the Pac-12 championship 
UCLA shot very well. Arizona guys were just standing around. Arizona made a run in the second half. It wasn't enough to beat Steve Alford's team. This Arizona team has been humbled. More importantly, against top 25 competition, this team is 4-1. and one. When you look at their bracket, the bracket is eminently winnable. The other top teams in the bracket are teams like Gonzaga. By the way, Gonzaga hasn't played a top 25 team all year. Right? Contrast that with Arizona's record. You have Creighton. Now, Creighton is tough. I believe they're underrated. They're 2-1 and one against top 25 teams. But understand that Creighton and Wisconsin, the other big dog in that division, and Wisconsin, by the way, is 6-3 against top 25 teams, they're going to cannibalize each other. Because they have to face each other right before the winner plays Arizona. So understand, understand that Arizona wouldn't face either Creighton or Wisconsin until the Elite Eight. By then, you'll be close enough to the finish line to start hedging the plays. Right? You want to hedge at the Elite Eight the Elite Four, then you're in the finals. Depending on the odds, especially when you have the one seed like Arizona, you might even be able to start hedging in the Sweet 16 because the other team will almost certainly be the underdog, and on a money line play, you'll get leverage betting against the team you already have at, get this, 9-1. to one. I believe Arizona is the most athletic team in this tournament and you're getting them at nine to one to win the tournament I like the play let me also say this too San Diego State is a problem no doubt about it but just understand against top 50 teams San Diego State my ex-wife's alma mater was three and three just food for thought, right? They were 500 against top 50 teams. Understand Arizona, 11 and 3 against top 50 teams. That's the bracket. That's the West, folks. Now let's talk about some other teams and why I'm not going to touch them. Kansas, a fascinating team. I love Bill Self. Bill Self is a gambler's dream as a coach. He delivers. He has talent. Guys like Wiggins. They look great on paper. Right? 24-9. I mean, they, they look spectacular. Here's the problem. They're in the same bracket with Florida and UCLA. Right? I won't even name Syracuse, which I think is a paper tiger. I believe that that team, no matter how talented, is too risky to fool around with. How about these four teams, all in the same bracket? Louisville, and by the way, to all of those people who are talking up Rick Pitino's squad, understand that Rick Pitino's squad was 6-5 and five against top 50 opposition. Understand, too, Rick Pitino's squad played a very soft schedule. Well, understand Louisville's in the same bracket with, speaking of soft schedules, Wichita State. By the way, how soft is Wichita State's schedule? They only played one game against top 25 teams. One. Right? Then, of course, you have Duke in the same bracket with Michigan in the same bracket. So... Just given the toughness of the brackets, I don't feel comfortable taking Kansas, Florida, UCLA, Louisville, Duke, Wichita State, or Michigan. But there is a team out there that looks to me to have a clear path to the Final Four, and that's Michigan State. I know. 
Michigan State right now is a four seed. whoop de do Do you know that they just beat Michigan, a two seed? And Wisconsin, another two seed. In other words, this is that four seed that's already beaten recently. Seeds higher than that. Also, in terms of knowing the tournament, Tom Izzo is one of the best coaches in any sport in the United States. Folks, he's been there. He's done that. Right? You're getting superior coaching. More importantly, let's look at their bracket. Right? They wouldn't be meeting number one seed, Virginia, until the Sweet 16. Right? Let me also point out, too, that Michigan State has played a much tougher schedule, much tougher than Virginia. Let's talk about another team that's highly rated in that bracket, Villanova. Did you know that Villanova is only 2-3 and three against top 25 competition and hasn't played as tough a schedule as Michigan State? In fact, the secret to Michigan State is that they're peaking right now. And they've played a tougher schedule than most of the teams out there. Also understand, Michigan State against top 25 teams, they're 6-4. and four. A better record against top 25 teams than one seed, Virginia. So I believe this four seed is much better than advertised. The casinos know it. When's the last time you saw a one seed going off at seven to one odds to win the whole thing? Put it this way, you're getting longer odds taking one seed Arizona to win the whole thing than you are taking four seed Michigan State to win the whole thing. That tells me there's a lot of smart money out there. There are a lot of sharps sitting around scratching their heads at how a team this good with this coach could slip to a four seed in this tournament. All you need to know is that they've already beaten two of the two seeds out there, right? And they don't have Kansas, Florida, UCLA, Louisville, Duke, Wichita State, or Michigan to worry about in this tournament. They only have to get by a one seed with a worse record than them against elite competition, right? And Villanova with a losing record against the top 25. Also, look, I know a lot of people love the history of North Carolina. Folks, Dean Smith is no longer the coach. Michael Jordan, Brad Doherty, James Worthy, Kenny Smith, they're no longer there, right? Jerry Stackhouse, Rasheed Wallace, don't hold on to the memories and have it cloud your judgment here. Right? North Carolina just doesn't have the shooting. Right? They just don't. So as you look at the bracket, you're going to see some names that used to mean something in the past. UConn, for example. Right? Cincinnati. Just know that right now Michigan State is deeper than all of these teams. I like Michigan State at 7-1 to one as one of my plays. So to recap, and keep in mind, you're talking about a tournament with 64 teams or whatever. More if you want to count the play-in teams. Okay, fair enough. But of all of these teams, I believe the best betting play is to make it deep in this tournament where the games start to matter. Our number one seed, Arizona. Right? West Coast. Maybe I'm biased because I'm on the West Coast. But Arizona. And the second team is, yes, a four seed, Michigan State. Right? I think those teams, quite frankly, are in manageable brackets. And I think those teams have the athletes and the depth to simply physically overwhelm opponents even when they're not playing their A game. Let me hear from you. 
I know there's a Florida contingent out there. I know Billy Donovan has done it multiple times. Great. Right? And I know there are Louisville people out there. I understand, according to some metrics, Louisville has few peers. And I know Louisville's been on a run of late. And I know there are even Wichita State people who want to talk about the fact that they made the Final Four last year. Fair enough. Let me hear from all of you. The goal here isn't a competition. The goal here is to get an edge on the casino. So if there's information that you feel I'm missing, that you want to share with the public, I hope you do so in the comment section to this video. In summary, the futures plays I like, and keep in mind, I want to get leverage on the casino, right? So I'd rather bet futures at times than prohibitive favorites in games, right? I don't want to be giving the casino leverage. I want to get leverage from the casino. So I like 9-1 to one Arizona, and I like 7-1 to one Michigan State. Let me know who you like. Leave it in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.